Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. And today we are jumping right back into the Pajama Beard Saga from r slash Tales of Neckbeards. I did not expect the previous video to do so well. Many, many people would like me to continue this saga, so I will wait no longer. I will go ahead, bring you guys what you want regarding the big compilation video that I will make out of these stories. Uh, you can expect that sometime around the end of the month. That should give people enough time to uh, kind of let this leave from their minds and then perhaps they'll be enticed to watch the new video. But anyways, <laughs> if you have not watched parts 1 and 2, I will try and remember to link that in the description, so do please check it out. I've rambled far too much as usual. Without any further delay, let's jump right back in to the Pajama Beard Saga. Pajama Beard Encounter 3 Snowstorm Sucker Punch. Nice. My third encounter with our obese lichen friend, through which he exposes more of his mm, charming personality. <laughs> the cast. Me slash OP, October. 17-year-old rough and tumble chick who enjoys fishing and food. Pajama Beard, PB. Our dashing 22-year-old lichen who is built like a midget Michelin man. <laughs> Pajama Beard's mom, morbidly obese middle-aged white woman who smells only slightly better than her beard spawn. <laughs> Dan's son, we'll call him Jack. He's 25 and comes to help his dad run the camp on occasion, currently enrolled at a state school. It was Friday night, two days after the events detailed in my second encounter with Pajama Beard. Clouds had built in thick against the mountain that day, and for that entire week it dropped well below freezing at night. According to Dan, a storm was blowing in, and it was a 75% chance it would snow that night and into Saturday. Now, I'm no fool. When it comes to the outdoors, I know what I'm doing. I'd seen the clouds early that morning and busted out snow chains from my truck, as well as my bearskin gloves and heavy parka. Sudden snow in June is not uncommon in the eastern Sierras, and I could tell this was going to be a nasty one. This is what I was talking about when I mentioned 11 hikers had died in the past few years in the first encounter. The storms come out of nowhere. One day you're wearing shorts, the next you're in heavy snow gear. That's just how it is in this year as this time of year. However, Pajama Beard and his family were not so outdoor smart. They would be caught woefully unprepared in this last minute snow blast from an otherwise very mild winter. Friday night, I decided to sleep in the living room as the cabins are not at all insulated, and the heater is right there next to the couch. I remove my roll of biscuits from my freezer as well as some elk sausage, and put some gravy mix down from the little cupboard. I intend to warm myself up with biscuits and gravy in the morning, and then eat the rest for lunch and maybe breakfast the next day. I sleep in my light sleeping bag on top of the couch because that frickin' couch is gross. In the morning I wake up, and I can feel the cold from the moment I zip down the side of my bag, Looking out the window, I can see that the snow has come down like icing on a Cinnabon cinnamon roll. Thick as all hell, and piled waist deep. I mean waist deep from the perspective of someone who's 5 foot 4. I'm cold as f despite the heater trying its hardest, so I quickly get dressed and attempt to gather up my snow gear while the biscuits bake in the little hand light gas oven and the gravy heats with the sausage on top of the stove. I'm digging the ice spikes for my boots out of one of the bags when I hear a hard knock on my cabin's door. Okay, I thought. I don't start work for another 45 minutes. What's this about? To my surprise, it's Dan's son at my back door. I didn't even know he had come up. I open the door, and I am blasted in the face with freezing air. Hey, can I come in? Jack asks. Yeah, sure. Hurry. It's cold. I say to him, and he clamors inside and shuts the door. Sorry, I know it's before your workday starts, October, but we need your help. I say nothing and look at him, so he continues. The people in cabin 17 came by early this morning, or at least the lady did, and said that they don't have any snow clothes, but we don't have any four-wheel drive on any of our cars to help them out, and their RV definitely won't cut it, so they asked if you'd be willing to drive down to town and buy them some snow jackets and stuff. Obviously, they're paying, but you're the only one who can drive down there, so would you be willing to help us out here a bit? Dan says that he'll pay for the gas and the extra work hours. I want to scream at this point. These pricks that damn near got me fired three days prior now want me to drive down the mountain in the fucking snow 
and buy them sh because they're too f dimwitted to bring it themselves. Ugh. I know I had an attitude when I responded, and it wasn't aimed at Jack, but at that point, I couldn't help myself. Fine, I'll do it, but I'm eating my f breakfast first. After my biscuits and gravy, I step outside. I now see why Jack came to my back door, as the front is piled with snow. I had forgotten to put down salt. I trudge over to the tackle shop and confirm with Dan that it was indeed cabin 17 that asked for the help. And of course, it was. Something to note, since we're up in the mountains, Dan offers a sort of pickup delivery service to the guests, permitting that they pay for whatever they want to be picked up. That way they can stay on the mountain and not have to worry about it. I'm sure if I had not been there, he would have regretted that hardcore on this occasion. I then make the reluctant walk over to cabin 17. I have a pen and pad shoved into my glove so I can write down exactly what they need. I knock on the door to the cabin, and after what seems like an eternity, the door swings open. In the doorway stands Pajama Beard's morbidly obese mother, who smells like hairspray and bacon, but not like the good hairspray, that shit from the 80s that makes a better flamethrower than it does hairspray. She ushers me inside, and I step in. My spikes give me an extra inch and a half of height, but even with that in mind, she still seemed tiny. The place smells like a homeless orgy. I mean... <laughs> I mean, just foul. Absolutely foul. There are wrappers and paper plates strewn about, and more empty soda bottles than floor space. I can smell food being cooked in the kitchen, the bacon has been burned for sure, and the faint hints of ham that I smell are definitely burned as well. When it comes to meat, I am a f***ing bloodhound. You cannot hide that shit from me, especially if it's been overcooked, even a tad. The whale then opens her mouth and begins a list that seems almost never-ending of all the things that they need, beginning with the snow gear, then moving into food. And lots of food. I mean, 24 packs of soda and donuts as well as party-sized chip bags are on this ever-growing list. By the time she's finished, she's taken a seat on the couch and seems almost, dare I say, out of breath. I glance down at her and see something which I wish I hadn't. She's picking food crumbs out of her bra and eating them. <laughs> <laughs> and the action has caused her clearly too tight shirt to move up, exposing an enormous pale and bloated belly. Disgusting. I look up from this as quickly as possible and go over the list again, and she confirms that I have everything down. Then of course I ask for the money to buy this feast. She looks side to side and then screams, Pajama Beard, where's my purse? There's a moment of silence and then a response, In here, Bob, I'll bring it over. From the kitchen waddles Pajama Beard, wearing a shirt this time with a wolf growling. It's too small for him though, and like his mother, his belly too sticks out. His face looks like a grease trap, and he's stuffing himself with burnt bacon. Little bits of it have somehow managed to jump into his greasy unibrow. <laughs> his smell, however, is too much for the meat to mask, and he grows uncomfortably close to me, damn near spitting into my face as he says, So, we meet again. He then hands his mom the purse and declares, I have something to add to the grocery list. Alright, I respond. What do you want to add? He then gives me this shit-eating grin and says, Jerky! And nothing else. Uh, I respond mildly confused. Any particular type? No, he responded. I think I may have cringed because he was attempting to be sly. Whatever type the lady likes the best. I turned red. I know I did, but I wasn't embarrassed. I was livid. This f pig who almost had me fired was attempting to smooth things over with one of my favorite f snack foods. Little did I know he was trying to do more than just smooth things over. I said simply, okay, I think your ham is burning, and wheeled around and got the hell out of there as quickly as possible. I don't think I even shut the door. The drive down and shopping went smoothish. I got a lot of stairs with all that food in my cart. And it was extremely awkward trying to explain why I was buying it to the cashier, but I survived. I had some trouble finding the clothes in the sizes they needed, though, and ended up having to drive all the way to Bishop to find them. Beyond that, all was okay. I stopped at a place called Shat's Bakery and bought myself a loaf of sourdough bread and an apple pull-away cake. 
I also did my shopping while I was out. By the time I was headed back up the mountain, it was already past noon, and I'd burned through half a tank of gas, so I just ended up filling up the tank. After all, Dan promised to pay for it. Upon my return to camp, I unloaded my groceries, and then ended up just driving my truck up to cabin 17, as there was simply too much shit to carry feasibly up to them. Surprisingly, the unloading process goes uneventfully, and for a second I thought I was actually in the clear when, just as I'm about to leave, Pajama Beard's voice fills my unprepared ears. I think you forgot something, he said again. He had that grin on his face. I look down, and he's holding the bag of jerky I bought, and he extends his arm. Here, take it. it it's yours. No, thank you. I'm fine, I say quickly, and I then exit the cabin, because freezing my ass off in the snow is better than talking to this freak. <laughs> to my dismay, he follows me out and waddles after me through the snow, desperate to keep up. Finally, after he keeps persisting, I turn around. Dude, thanks, but I'm fine, really. He catches up to me, and I can see very clearly that he's huffing now, as his breath is visible in the cold. Look, he says to me in almost a whisper, I know what you are, but I promise I won't tell anyone. I'm confused as fuck now and simply ask, what? He continues his whispery creep fest voice, I know you're like me, and that's why we get along so well before. He pauses. I'm speechless. I know I've invaded your territory, and as a clearly alpha female, you must see this as a threat, but I didn't mean to upset you or disturb you, so take this as a peace offering. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he stretched out his sausage arm, attempting to hand me the jerky. This time I accept his peace offering, stepping closer to him to grab it. He then says, you know, I think you and I should talk some more. Maybe come back up here and I'll show you the inside of my RV. I then, without any word or warning, give this man the hardest f <clears throat> gut punch that I have ever delivered to another human being until this day. Before he can cry or say anything, I take my peace jerky and leave. <laughs> I remember thinking that the sucker punch to the gut would finally be the end of our interactions, Boy, oh boy, was I horrendously wrong. This beard who had somehow convinced himself that I too was a werewolf would, from that moment forward, simply be more inspired to take me for his mate. In hindsight, he must have been into BDSM or some shit because no one who's mentally stable would take a punch to the gut as I'm interested. But that's for the next installment in the Pajama Beard Encounters. <laughs> Oh, nothing quite like buying a gift for the woman you're courting with mommy's money. <laughs> what a loser. And then it goes to the next level and he's like, I know you're a werewolf too. Are you sure? <laughs> Might want to double check the facts. Just because you saw me eating beef jerky, now I'm a werewolf. This boy is beyond help, man. My god. Obviously, there's no father in the picture, so how's this boy ever going to get set straight? Oh, that boy ain't right. Gotta feel kinda bad for Pajama Beard. As far as a gut punch being equated to like the BDSM community, don't do that OP, okay? Even people that <laughs> are into BDSM are like aware enough of social cues to be like, oh, you aren't interested. <laughs> okay, no problem. This is just a, a one-off freak and <laughs> I cannot wait to see how it ends. Honestly, I'm living for this story. I might sit down and record all the episodes that I have to record of this story tonight. <laughs> That's how good it is. I just gotta know. But anyways, let's jump into part number four and just watch as things devolve further, I guess. <laughs> Pajama Beard Encounter 4. Hunt for Red October. My fourth and shortest encounter with Pajama Beard that still managed to be extremely cringy. The cast... Me slash OP, October, 17-year-old rough-and-tumble female who enjoys fishing and food. Pajama Beard, PB, a 22-year-old lichen who has decided that I am the object of his desire. Dan, my boss, and the man who owns the lodge. So, it's been an entire week since the events of Encounter 3, and I'm on top of the world right now. 
I caught my personal best stream trout two days after all the snow melted, three pounds, which is big for a stream fish, and I had been brining and smoking trout to sell in the bait and tackle shop. If you've never smoked rainbow trout, you're missing out, because if it's done correctly, it's honestly really good. But I digress. For that week, I was busy cleaning cabins, raking up infinite amounts of pine needles, and doing other general stuff around the camp. I'd gone down to town one more time in that week span to let my boyfriend and family know that I was indeed alive. And yes, I did have to clean Pajama Beard's cabin, and it took two hours longer than usual because an ungodly amount of soda had soaked into the carpets, and the stove was coated in grease. Surprisingly to me, my punch had gone unprotested, and Pajama Beard's mother hadn't come screaming to my boss. More than likely, Pajama Beard was too ashamed of himself to tell his mother that this mean girl punched him at the next Tuesday. At that point, I thought for certain he was gone, and I would never have to deal with his disgusting werewolf ass again. And I was right for that week, but that week only. It's a crisp Monday morning. I wake up early to fish and make my breakfast, and I watch a doe and her fawn eat grass that has grown into the foundation of that old lodge. I get a few really nice sunrise pictures of the glacier flooded with a pink light, and I make a tiny snowman from the very little remaining snow near the trout pond. All's right with the world, I suppose. And after fishing for a little while, I head over to the shop to talk to Dan about my work for that day. As it so happened, there were no cabins to clean for that day, and Dan was content running the shop, so he gave me the day to live a little. So that's just what I did. I packed myself lunch and geared up my hiking stuff, and went on a day hike to the first lake. It was beautiful. The glacial water is turquoise, and it's so peaceful up there that you almost forget that down the mountain road is a world full of people. By the time I make it back down to camp, it's mid-afternoon, and I'd gotten kinda hot in my hiking clothes, so I elect to change and just fish for the rest of that day. Should've stayed up on the mountain. I walk past the bait and tackle shop and overhear a conversation. There's also a somewhat nice BMW pulled up in front, and I hear a voice I almost recognize. The conversation I eavesdrop on goes as follows. Dan, she's an employee. I cannot give you my employee's information. Pajama beard. But we had a real connection, and she said you would give me her number. Dan, October never told me that. Pajama beard. Can't you just trust me and at least give me her email? Dan, not until she tells me herself that she wants me to, and that means she tells me face to face, not through you. Pajama Beard, well, then I'll just find her and ask her then. Dan, okay, good luck with that. She went on a hike today though. Pajama Beard, well, she has to come back down eventually. At this, I make a dash for my cabin and lock the doors. This creep was trying to get my number from my fucking boss. Ick. I change into less hot clothing and watch through my front window until after probably two hours, I finally see the BMW pull out of the drive and start to head down the road. Thinking that the coast was clear, I emerge and head towards the bridge to go fishing. I make it past the bridge where there's a small parking lot for hikers and to my horror, Pajama Beard is parked there and it's too late. He's seen me. I make a beeline for the brush along the creek side, but I hear his voice, and due to the fact that I wasn't born in a barn, I stop. Pajama Beard. I've been hunting for you all day, October. OP, I never told you my name. Pajama Beard. Your boss told me that much, but he wouldn't do me a favor. OP, playing dumb. Uh, what was that favor? Pajama Beard. He wouldn't do me the honor of giving me your number. OP, my phone doesn't work up here. No one's does, so there's no point in that. Also, I'm not single. Pajama Beard, now seemingly enraged. So, you took my jerky that was bought with my money, fully knowing that you have a boyfriend? OP, I think you mean your mom's money. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> and yes. Also, just because it's yours doesn't mean I owe you anything. It was a gift. Pajama Beard. But... And then a grossly long pause. I want you to be mine so badly. We're both lichens. We could have a family. 
and I would hunt and provide for you, and you'd stay at the den and raise pups, it would be perfect. <laughs> God, I'm cringing so hard. Oh, okay. I'm just going to let that statement soak in a little bit while I tell you a mini story. <laughs> My junior year, i.e. the year before this summer, I had an interesting experience with a group of lesbian weebos. Weeaboos? You see, they too were convinced that I was a werewolf, but for different reasons that they put together after a few months of my feeling bad for them and talking to them. Through the course of our conversations, they found out some things about me and compiled them into a sort of manifesto to prove my guilt of lycanthropy. The list was something like this. 1. I'm allergic to silver. I actually am, but it just makes my skin green and smell gross. 2. I'm colorblind. Again, I am, but it's just I have a reduced sensitivity to red light and I can still see some reds. 3. I like my meat raw. Okay, again, this wasn't wrong. I like beef tartare, but most of the time I like my steak blue, and yes, I do like sashimi. 4. I don't really sleep. This one was only kinda true, because at the time I was slam studying for an AP test. 5. I'm kinda hairy for a chick. This one is embarrassingly true as well. If I don't shave, then I have more hair on my arms than my boyfriend does. So yeah, this was a thing. And they spread this rumor about me to most of the junior class, and some people actually bought into their theory. I'm still awaiting my trial at Weeb Court. <laughs> Anyways, back to Pajama Beard. After his weird fantasy confession to me and his statement of wanting to make me his own, I simply said, you're fucking sick. <laughs> and I tailed it into the brush. Pajama Beard wasn't able to follow me, though I know he tried, and I, after crossing the creek again further down, was eventually able to escape him for the time being. Stay tuned to Pajama Beard Radio. In the next installment, I get a letter from our heartbroken Lycan Beard. <laughs> Honestly, my default mode for, like, any cringy statement like that Oh, but I want you to be mine! It's like, dude, that's that's so not alpha. If you are a real alpha, then you would fight my boyfriend to the death. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> then have OP call her boyfriend up there to just beat the hell out of some pudgy fat guy. <laughs> now that's a show! Dinner and a show! God, it's so horrifying. He's just like trying to stalk this woman. And then again, he's, he's driving the BMW, which I guess it's his mom's BMW. BMW, but uh, you know, money can't buy me love type of shit. <laughs> He'd probably be doing pretty well for himself if he was just able to act normal. That's all you need to do. You got some money, just just act normal. Even if you're boring as shit, they'll be like, well, he's, he's rich. Or his mother is, I guess. Or they've got a car payment that costs more than the house they live in. All of these are real life nightmare possibilities. <laughs> God, these stories are so good. We got two more episodes of this to go. Four more stories, I do think. And then it will be wrapped. But, oh, I'm I'm quite looking forward to it. So, I hope you guys will join me again tomorrow for more Pajama Beard. And I will be on time this time. I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe as well if you did enjoy the video. I appreciate seeing them likes. I do reply to comments uh, as I can. And, of course, we've also got links in the description to Twitter, Discord, and Patreon. And as always, I'd like to give a huge, huge shout out to my lovely, lovely patrons, just Austin, Robert Waits, Mr. Weasel, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radimus Cisco, and the OG, Nico the Legend. If you can't support, that's awesome. If you can't, then that's no problem. I just appreciate you being here with me today. The channel is growing so quick, and I am super stoked to see it happen. But anyways, friends, I hope you take care of yourselves out there, wear your mask, do not forget to wash your hands, and always, always keep yourself safe because you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. So I will see you in the next one, friends, and until then, bye-bye. And he grows uncomfortably, and he grows uncomfortably, and he grows uncomfortably, Jesus. <laughs>